Praise the Lord. If you are still there, I said, Praise the Lord. What a glorious day we have had today. And I pray, Lord, that you bless your people abundantly tonight in Jesus' name. More and more. Somebody there, help me shout more and more. Say that again, more and more. For your soul, for your spirit, for your body, for your life, for your family, and for our church, more and more in Jesus' name. Father, we do thank you for today. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the great things you are doing. Thank you for your love for everyone. We are praying, O oh Lord, there will be a manifestation of your love even during this retreat to every soul, every spirit, everyone in Jesus' name. All our lack, you will supply. All our need, you will supply. And your truth will penetrate every life and turn every life around in Jesus' name. Open our eyes to see our hearts to understand, our faith to grasp, and to receive everything you have for us in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You'll give me a victorious amen before you sit down. God bless everyone. We're coming to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 23 buy the truth and sell it not buy the truth and sell it not also wisdom and instruction and understanding in these days when truth has fallen in the streets in these days when truth is cursed in many assemblies, in these days when there is a lot of speaking, a lot of sharing, a lot of testifying, a lot of telling, telling stories, and yet the truth is cursed. The word of God is coming to us. And the word of God is saying, by the truth, Purchase the truth, possess the truth, own the truth, embrace the truth, live by the truth, walk in the truth, by the truth, and sell it not. It's so easy to buy something of value, and to buy something precious, and to buy something great, something serviceable, something profitable, and then at a critical hour, at a difficult moment, when it appears, I need this, I cannot get. I need that, I cannot get. And then to look at that purchase you have made before and say, I think I'll exchange this precious thing with all the other things I need. And at that time, the temptation might come to sell what appears very precious to you because you want to buy, you want to get another thing. And sometimes the people, they buy the truth. They purchase the truth. They possess the truth. They own the truth. But at a critical hour, at a critical moment, when they feel they need this, they need this, they need that, and they can't get them, then they feel, what do I have? I have the truth. I think I can give that away. I think I can sell that. I think I can give that up so that I can have this other thing. That's why the word of God is coming to us. And it says, never in your life will you ever think that another thing will be so precious. Another thing will be so profitable that you give up the truth so as to have that other thing. And so it reminds us, buy the truth and sell it not. Also buy wisdom. Get wisdom. Purchase wisdom. Own wisdom. Embrace wisdom. 
sacrifice so you can have the wisdom of God and instruction by it instruction purchase it instruction embrace it instruction possess it and understanding is telling us how precious those things are and it tells us how profitable wisdom is understanding is instruction is doctrine is the truth of the word of god is it tells us in john chapter 8 john chapter 8 reading from verse 32 john chapter 8 verse 32 here are the words of jesus christ and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free as we look at every area of our lives and the things that bind us and the things that chain us and the things that hold us down and the things that pin us down that we are not able to move forward if there is anything that comes to release us anything that comes to liberate us anything that comes to set us free it is the truth that's why he's saying you want to keep freedom in your life freedom from satan freedom from sickness freedom from sin freedom from the black powers in society freedom from all the chains and the shackles of the devil he says here is what we need truth because it says and you shall know the truth possess the truth understand the truth be guarded by the truth built up by the truth stand on the truth pray in the truth and live a life that is saturated by the truth it says and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free what a glorious thing we have as we have the truth but it's a price a price to pay a price to pay let me ask you you're looking for something very precious something very important something profitable unto you and you go to this particular market i cannot find it you go the following week to that market you cannot find it and this is the key in your life that will set you free that will liberate you that will make you to have the joy and the fulfillment of your life you go to that market again and you cannot find that thing but surprisingly you never go to any other market and somebody is telling you you will find that thing you are looking for and you've been looking for it you never got to it it's in this other market and then your mind is so wedded to this market where you have been going and you go there again and lo and behold you cannot find you go there again lo and behold you cannot find that you went to that market before mommy went to that market before our people went to that market before my friends like that market they go to that market even though i cannot find what i'm looking for yet i'll keep on going to that market that looks like not very wise that looks like you're not thinking of your life that seems like that looks like you want to be suffering the need and the scarcity for the rest of your life look the truth is the greatest thing you can have and you keep on going to a particular place i'm looking for this truth you cannot find it there you go again you cannot find it there you go again you cannot find it there and then somebody points out to you you know the truth you're looking for that will give you eternal life eternal sufficiency eternal satisfaction that will give you power that will give you victory that will give you authority the truth you are looking for we have found it is in this particular place you said yes let me follow them and then you get there you say what this is the truth nothing but the truth like breaking through conquering truth healing truth 
saving truth, sufficient truth, satisfactory truth, everlasting truth, the truth of the gospel in its purest form. Then your mind says, yes, although I find the truth there. Just before you buy it, then you go to your regular market again, where you cannot find the truth. How reasonable will that be? How wise will that be? That's what the Lord is telling us in his word. Buy the truth and sell it not. Tonight we'll come to consider this subject, the price and the profit of the truth. The price and the profit of the truth. There are three uh, things we are considering uh, in the message. Number one, the purchase and the preservation of saving truth. There's truth that saves. That is a kind of truth that doesn't save. I can know, I may know all the mathematical theories of the world truth. It doesn't say. I may know all the political maneuverings, political truth in the world. It doesn't say. I may know all the economic truths in the world. It doesn't say. There is a kind of truth. It's peculiar to the Bible. It's peculiar to this gift from heaven. The truth that saves, saving truth, Purchase that, preserve that, the purchase and the preservation of saving truth. Point number two, the power and the profit of scriptural truth. The power and the profit of scriptural truth. There, there is truth that is not scriptural. There is truth that is historical. There is truth that is natural. There is truth that is human. All the truths, whatever they are, truths coming from a philosopher, truths coming from psychology, truths coming from science, truths coming from geology, the age of the world, truths, astronomy, the distance of the stars, truth. All the truth, that's not scriptural truth. That one does not profit anyone beyond the world in which we live today. There is the gravitational truth. If you throw something up, it comes down. That's true, that's true. That's truth, but that truth is not the saving truth. It's not the truth that prepares you for heaven. The power and the profit of scriptural truth. Number three, the proclamation and the penetration of sanctifying truth. The proclamation that somebody will rise up and say, yes, I purchase it. Yes, I preserve it. Yes, I feel its power. And yes, I know the prophet, but then I'm going to proclaim it because there are many people in our cities, many people in our towns, many people in our local governments, many people all around us that do not have the saving truth, this eternal truth, this sufficient truth, this sanctifying truth, that do not have this scriptural truth. And because of that, we rise up and we say, now that I possess, now that I purchase, I want to proclaim and I want to penetrate every community with this sanctifying truth. Number one, the purchase and the preservation of saving truth. Number two, the power and the profit of scriptural truth. Number three, the proclamation and the penetration of sanctifying truth. We we'll come to number one, the purchase and the preservation. Purchase it. Purchase it. We're coming to Proverbs again, chapter 23. 
And we're reading from verse 23. Proverbs chapter 23. Verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. I'm sure you understand. It's not talking about with money. If you think about this, who had the truth in the Old Testament? What supplied the truth in the Old Testament? Who can you tell? If I were to tell you, name one person that had the truth, possessed the truth, loved the truth, held on to the truth, embraced the truth. You might tell me, Moses, you're right. The truth of worship, the truth of following the Lord, the truth of coming out of bondage and going to the land flowing with milk and honey. You might tell me, Joshua, the truth that gave them penetration into the land. You might tell me, David, that he had the truth. You might tell me, Isaiah, the truth unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And it says the government shall be upon his shoulder. And the zeal of the Lord shall do this. Who possess the truth in the old covenant? You might tell me Daniel. Daniel that had understanding of the scripture of truth. You might tell me all those prophets. They had the truth. How did they get the truth? With money? Ask Moses not. Not worth money. As Joshua, not worth money. As David, not worth money. How did they get it? They were searching. They were seeking. They put the greatest price on the truth. They wanted nothing but the truth. They consecrated their lives that this is what I want. And because of that consecration, because of that searching, because of that abandonment unto God, because of that surrender, because of that submission unto the Lord, that's how the truth came unto them. How then do we buy the truth? A searching heart, a willing heart, a submissive heart, a surrendered heart, a yielded heart, a heart that puts the greatest price and the greatest value and the greatest worth on this truth, the truth that saves. And it says, once you submit and once you surrender and once you search and you get this truth, buy the truth and sell it not. Don't compromise it. Don't give it away. Don't exchange it for any other thing. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. And I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that has no money, come ye and buy. You see that? Ye that have no money, come ye and buy. We don't get this one with earth's currency. We get this from the heart's devotion. We come to the Lord and we tell the Lord, if there's anything essential for me, if there's anything important for me, if there's anything I'm seeking after, if there's anything I'm pursuing, if there's anything I'm running after, is the truth that saves, the truth that will save the soul, the truth that will change my life, the truth that will endure from now until eternity. I come, nothing in my hands I bring, because there's nothing of this earth that can purchase the truth. And that's why it says, ye, he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat. Ye, come, buy wine and milk without money. You can tell it's not talking about the wine of the world. You need money for that. 
You can tell it's not the milk of the world. You need money for that. But now you're buying this, the wine of heaven, the joy of heaven. The transformation of heaven the satisfaction of heaven and the meal that makes you grow and it says without money and without price wherefore do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which satisfies not hacking diligently unto me and eat and ye, ye that eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness, incline your ear, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make with you an eternal covenant. Then he says, even the sure mercies of David. You can tell then what the Lord is saying he wants to do for you. He wants to give you this saving truth. And yet he says there must be a passion, a desire in your heart that you surrender every other thing, every earthly thing, and say, I'm seeking, I'm searching for this pearl of great price so that I will have the truth, I will own the truth, I will possess the truth. I will keep the truth. I will know the truth. The truth that transports me from earth to heaven. Matthew chapter 13. The Lord gives it like in a parable, an illustration that tells us how to purchase this truth saving truth how to purchase this truth everlasting growth everlasting truth eternal truth because when all the other things that appear true when they have all passed away when the earth itself with all its uh, all its gravitational forces and laws when they have all passed away when the earth with all the planets have passed away, when everything people called the truth of the earth, when everything has passed away, this truth, this truth, the truth that saves, will still be there eternally because it gives us eternal life, everlasting life, eternal salvation, eternal redemption. Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 44, Matthew, chapter 13, verse 44, again. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. It says this treasure healed in a field, the which when a man has found the hideous and for the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he has and he buyeth that field. Here the Lord Jesus Christ illustrates the commitment it takes, the value, the worth it takes, the evaluation it takes, the surrender it takes. Here the Lord himself illustrates the passion we have, the desire we have to have and to purchase and to buy this truth. It says, it's like a man looking for treasures. And then he's been searching and searching. And all of a sudden, he discovers the truth that is hidden. Truth that you don't find on the surface, as you read the word of God, you'll discover it's like a wide field. And many people can read and they have not discovered the truth, the saving truth. How many people have read Genesis over and over and over and they cannot see Jesus Christ there as a siege of the woman? It's hidden there. 
How many people have read Exodus over and over and they have not seen Jesus Christ there at the Lamb whose blood is shed? And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. How many people have read Numbers and they have read it over and over and they see the serpent lifted up and they have not discovered that serpent that is lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so shall the son of man be lifted up the truth is hidden there how many people have read Deuteronomy and they have not seen the prophet that shall come I'll put my word in his mouth and then of all he will speak to you you will listen to him because he has a final truth authoritative truth the truth that saves how many people have read even the New Testament the Jewish people have not seen their Messiah they have not seen the Christ but here it says you look at the field all of a sudden you discover you discover the precious thing, the treasure there. And because you so much want you to say, whatever it will take, I'm going to sell every other thing so that I can buy this. I'm going to give all my time. I'm going to search for this. I'm going to give my time in prayer. I'm going to find my, put my time in reading the word. I'm going to put my time in preparing for eternity. I've discovered the truth, the saving truth. I'll not let anything go. I'll not let anything stay. I'll not let anything hinder. I'll not let anything block my way. I'm going to have the truth, the saving truth. That's what it says. It's treasure which you have discovered. And you're willing to give up every other thing. You give up friendships. If that friendship will hinder the saving truth. You give up business. If that business will hinder the saving truth. You give up a kind of pleasure. Hobby. Hobby. You give up that hobby. If that hobby is going to hinder saving truth. You give up the club. If that club is going to hinder the saving truth. You have discovered treasure. And because you discover treasure, you see, this one I'll purchase. This one I'll possess. This one I'm going to embrace. And whatever comes in conflict, contradiction to it, I happily give it up. Look at verse 45. Verse 45, Matthew chapter 13. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pills. Who, when he had found one pill of great price, he went and he sold all that he had and he bought it. Isn't it wonderful? It's coming from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. It's telling us how precious the truth is. It's telling us how great the truth is. It's telling us how heavenly the truth is. It's telling us how irreplaceable the truth is that this merchant man looking for goodly peers and he finds one, just one, only one truth that saves. Just one, only one truth that prepares us for life eternal. Just one, only one truth that gives us the nature of God. The one truth, only one that adopts us into the family of God. Just one, only one that gives us a place, an inheritance in heaven, saving truth. And then he gave up every other thing. I'm asking you a question. What are you willing to give up? To have the saving truth. To possess the saving truth. What are you willing to deny yourself of? A club? A hobby? An idea? A pursuit? A trip? Traveling? Or maybe old religion? The religion that's not saved? What are you willing to give up? What you like? Your drinks, your food, the people that are associated with you and they hinder you from the fullness of the depth and the height and the length and the breadth of the saving truth of God. What are you willing to give up? That's what he's saying here, that you price it so much. You desire it so much. 
you put the highest and the greatest value on it that you are willing to give up any sin, every sin to have this. Purchase it. Buy it. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 26. Hebrews 11. I'm reading from verse 26. Hebrews 11. Verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. You know what, who that is talking about? This Moses. Moses had the offer to become the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And that implied because that daughter really should have been heir to the throne of Egypt. But because in their culture, a woman could not be their queen. A woman could not be their president. A woman could not be their national leader. But if she had a son, like Moses, that he eventually adopted as her own son, even though she could not be heir to the throne of Egypt, a son, Moses, would happily, easily get to that throne. David, uh, this Moses at that offer. He considered it. Here is the opportunity to be a king in the greatest empire of the time. And then uh, here is the opportunity to deliver the people, the people of God. Here is the opportunity that all those descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they'll come out of captivity and they will go to the land of promise. And not only that, the truth of scripture will come through them and bless the rest of the world. And, and Moses said, I opt for that. I choose that. I put value on that and I jettison, I refuse my opportunity of being the king or the emperor in the Egyptian empire because in verse 26 he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches, greater wealth, greater inheritance than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect. He chose this. He had preference unto the recompense of the reward. Can I just briefly tell you, Moses, before his time, Genesis had not been written. And God was wondering who he will give the truth of creation that God held who he will give that to. Before Moses came, the history of Abraham, who became Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who became Israel, had not been delivered or written for posterity. And God was holding on to it. Who oh, will I give this truth to? And eventually, Moses came up. And he had, he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He said, my heart, my passion, my desire is to have this truth coming from heaven. And God said, that's the man. And when God called him, he responded. And now, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. God revealed that to him. And the days of creation and the steps of creation, God revealed that to him. And the garden of Eden, God revealed that to him. And the fall of man, God revealed that to him. And the flood, God revealed that to him. And the process of redemption, God revealed that to him. And then Exodus, he saw it himself. And then he wrote that down. Leviticus wrote that down. Numbers wrote that down. And then the Deuteronomy wrote that down. Because he had respect for the recompense of that reward. And he said, I'm going to have the truth, whatever it's cost. I'm going to possess the truth, whatever it may cost. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 4. 
Deuteronomy chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 4 it says but she that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day behold I have taught you here is Moses now talking to the people I've taught you statutes and judgments even as the Lord my God commanded me the Lord revealed this to me saving truth scriptural truth sufficient truth satisfactory truth special truth supernatural truth that was revealed unto him that he should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statues and say surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people look at verse 7 for what nation is there what nation is there so great who has God so near unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for look at verse 8 and what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous it as all this law which I set before you this day the Lord revealed all the truth unto him and now here we are the truth he has given us that is saying purchase it possess it embrace it hold unto it let nothing take it away from you is the wisdom of heaven and is greater than the wisdom of the ages first Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 first Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 but ye if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou mightest behave thyself in the house of God which is the church of the living God look at this the pillar and the ground of, of the truth it says the church the church of God the church of the living God is a pillar and is a ground of the truth that means this is the kind of truth you cannot find outside the church because the church is a pillar of the truth is the ground of the truth is the depository repository of the truth it's the one that holds the truth he has a monopoly on the truth that the lord had given to the body of christ saving truth and I pray as we discover this truth, the truth of the gospel, whatever it takes, you'll give up every little, little sin. Purchase the truth, possess the truth in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen if you are there. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3. We'll see Moses. Let's see Paul now. Paul the apostle. And you're thinking about Paul the apostle. The unsearchable riches of the kingdom of God will become new creatures in Christ, Paul, and were renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit coming from Paul, will become identified with Christ coming from Paul, were buried with Christ coming from Paul, were risen with Christ coming from Paul, the very nature and the life of Christ and the mind of Christ is transferred, transmitted unto us. Coming from Paul, deep things of the scriptures, of the truth, 
How did he get that? Buy the truth and sell it not. How do you possess that? Let Paul tell us how God gave him that privilege. Philippians chapter 3 verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. All the hobbies are to give that up. My position among the Sanhedrin are to give that up. Jewish religion in which I made a great, a great profit are to give that up. Gamaliel, my, my mentor, my master, are to give him up. And all the Jewish ceremonies and Jewish rites are to give them up. And all the things I've said when I was young, I'm going to pursue this, I'm going to pursue that, I'm going to pursue this other thing, I give them up. All my hobbies, I give them up. All those clubs, I give them up. What things were gained to me? Those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless. And I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, the truth. Because he was passionately seeking for the truth. The unsearchable riches of the gospel of the Lord. He said, that's why I give all those things up for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And you count them but done that I may win Christ. And then the truth was not only to be purchased but preserved. Matthew Chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 35. Matthew chapter 24. And verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words, the truth coming from Christ, my words shall not pass away away. You're asking yourself, how much price are you paying for the knowledge of the world that will pass away? How much dedication are you giving for the truth of the world that will pass away? How much passion? How much earnestness? How much sacrifice are you giving to the knowledge and the truth of the world? That will pass away. And how much are you giving? Giving up for the truth, for the knowledge that will never pass away. Because as Jesus has said in the word of truth, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Point number two. What's the power of this scriptural truth? And what's the profit in this scriptural truth? Point number two, the power and the profit of scriptural truth. The power and the profit of scriptural truth. We're coming to Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. Here we're reading from verse 21. Daniel Chapter 10, verse 21. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. An angel came from heaven because nobody else here on earth at the time of Daniel could reveal this to him. And he wanted the truth. He loved the truth. He searched the truth. He fasted. He waited on the Lord. Reveal your truth unto me. He wanted to know the truth of the kingdom's coming, of the dominion coming, of the power coming, of the Messiah that he has spoken about in chapter 9. And then he waited on the Lord. And an angel came from heaven and he says, I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none 
that holdeth with me in all these things but Michael your prince the truth of scripture the scripture of truth second Timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 16 second Timothy chapter 3 reading from verse 16 scripture that's all truth all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine profitable for reproof profitable for correction profitable for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works think about this the truth we hear from the scriptures is the only one that can make man perfect man is unclean only the scriptures the truth we have from scriptures can make him clean man is defiled only the truth we have in scriptures can make him whole man is weak only the truth we have in scripture can make him strong man is lost only the truth we have in scripture can get him saved man is unholy only the truth we have in scripture can get him sanctified and holy man is imperfect there's no truth any other place scientific truth geological truth academic truth political truth anything you have in the world philosophical truth none can make him perfect only this can make him perfect in the sight of the lord that's the power of the truth of the world that's the profit of the truth of the world this is the truth that gets him begotten this is the truth that gets him regenerated this is the truth that gets him justified this is the truth that gets him purified made holy made righteous this is the truth that grants him the very nature of god james chapter 1 verse 18 james chapter 1 verse 18 of his own will begat he us with the word of truth of his own will there's no other way there's no other will and there's no other power that can make a man born again reborn recreated redeemed regenerated made anew in his soul made anew in his mind made anew in his brain made anew in his spirit made anew in his character of his own will begat he us by the will of by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures new life comes as we are begotten of this truth we come to first peter chapter one First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 22. See, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. See, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Think about it. The truth that purifies, you only find it inside the covers of this precious book the Bible, the gospel, the truth that endures until eternity. Any other place of truth? Any other book in the library? Any other idea in encyclopedias? Any other uh, kind of ideology you can find in all those magazines of the people of the world that purifies, that pardons, that purges, that perfects, that turns our lives around, that makes us heavenly, that makes us holy, that makes us to have 
the image of Christ stamped upon our hearts? No, never, only here. Seen, ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto faint love of the brethren. And then he goes on to say, See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Verse 23, being born again, reborn. Being born again, regenerated. Being born again, recreated. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word which liveth and abideth forever. Any other word from so and so? Any other word from such and such? Any other word from him who sits on the chair of authority, so to say, in your discipline, in your profession? Any other word that liveth and abideth forever? Uh -uh. This is the only word. It liveth forever. It will abide forever. It will make your soul live forever. And as you accept this truth, embrace the truth. As you purchase the truth, as you surrender to this truth, this word will make you live forever in Jesus' name. Look at verse 24. For all flesh is as grass. All flesh, all philosophers is as grass. All psychologists is as grass. All men in authority is as grass. All people in every generation, in every nation, everywhere, all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man, whoever the man may be, as the flower of grass, the grass withereth, and the flower thereof fadeth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word, praise the Lord. And this is the word. I said, praise the Lord. This is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. By the gospel is preached unto you. We're coming to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, I read from verse 9. Psalm 119, reading from verse 9. It's talking about the truth. And it's talking about the word. This word that liveth and abideth forever. It says in Psalm 119, verse 9, it tells us here, verse 9, wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Any other word in any other book that can make us cleanse our ways? No, not at all. That can cleanse the heart and cleanse the spirit and cleanse the soul and make it so clean, clean enough for heaven only here in the world. Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. It says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. This is that word, the only word that keeps us from sin cleanses us from sin, protects us from sin, preserves us from sin. It tells us in Vastachi, in Vastachi, it says, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have chosen. It's telling us here, 
have to make a choice because in making a choice you have a lot of alternatives before you how about this give your life to the hobby no i reject that how about this give your life to games no i reject that how about this give your life to making money I think I'm going to have a better choice. How about this one? To make sure that you give yourself a goal to read all the encyclopedias of the world so that you can become a moving, living, walking encyclopedia yourself. <laughs> That's a tall order. That's a great ambition. But after I've finished all those encyclopedias, what am I going to gain? Is he going to give me a niche in heaven? A place in heaven? A faster way to get to heaven? No, it's going to be so heavy on your mind. It's going to drag you down. I drop that. What am I going to choose then? Pastachi, I have chosen the way of truth. Gospel truth. Saving truth. Heavenly truth. Redeeming truth. The truth that takes me out of the worldly realm and takes me to the heavenly spiritual realm. Verse 1, 5, 1. Psalm 119, verse 1, 51. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are truth. All thy commandments are I truth. That's why I commit myself unto that. Psalm 43. In Psalm 43, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 43. Reading from verses 3 and 4. O send out thy light and thy truth. We have to appeal to God to do that. Because we cannot get it from any other source. Saving truth, saving light. Sanctifying truth, sanctifying light. Satisfactory truth, satisfactory light. Guiding truth, guiding light. That guides us in the way eternal. O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. The holy hill that's referring to heaven. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God my God. You see, that is the truth that sets us free. The truth that breaks all the yokes, all the chains, you must all the shackles, and sets our feet in the path eternal. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 6. Proverbs Chapter 16. And we're reading here from verse 6. Proverbs 16, verse 6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Truth, the purge is iniquity. Only coming from the Lord. Only coming from Christ. Only coming from the scriptures. Only coming from Calvary. Only coming from the spirit of truth. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. And now we come to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Reading from verse 30. John chapter 8. We're reading from verse 30. In John chapter 8, verse 30. And as he spake these words, the words of truth, 
many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews, we believed on him. If he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If he continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. After hearing the word of truth, Gamaliel might meet you in the, on the way. I say, hey, come, my student. Where have you been? I've been teaching you the law, the law of Moses, the ceremonies of Moses, the rituals of Moses. I miss you for quite a while. Now, come on, sit down here. But if you continue in the truth of Christ, in the gospel truth, I'll tell Gamaliel, no, I'm sorry. I've come out of that. That law, it doesn't save. That ceremony, it doesn't save. That ritual, it doesn't save. You might meet a master of religion. He had been teaching you before. And here you are now. Where did you go? All that period of the Easter, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we didn't see you. Well, come on now, sit down here. Let me palm some religion into you. The religion that is just tradition that does not save. Do this, don't do that. Drink this, don't drink that. Wear this, don't wear that. Go here, don't go there. And have this and don't have that. And it's a holiday, spiritual holiday. You say, sir, I'm come out of that now. Christ saves. Saving truth. Sanctifying truth. Purifying truth. And that's what Jesus said. You have to disown them. You have to abandon them. You have to come away from them and then hold on to the truth. If he continue in my word, the word of salvation, in my word, the word that sanctifies, in my word, the word of power. If he continue in my word, the word of the gospel, then are ye my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You'll be free. I said you will be free. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Here we're reading from verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 10. The importance of the truth. The essence of the truth. The power of the truth. The profit of the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. I was all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Isn't that a revelation? There are people that hear saving truth. But they are not saved. Why? They don't have love for the truth. Love for tradition eats them up. Love for the old religion eats them up. Love for social religion eats them up. Love for the past life, past associations eats them up. Because of that, they don't have love for the truth. And it says, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, I will not perish. Are you there? I said I will not perish. But you know, you have to have the love for the truth. Because it says, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send strong delusion unto them, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth. But our pleasure in unrighteousness. Look at verse 13. But we are bound 
to give thanks always to God for you. Paul is thanking God for the Thessalonian believers. I thank God for you. I said, I thank God for you. You love the truth. You accept the truth. You embrace the truth. And this truth will see you into life eternal. I praise God for you. And I pray you'll never leave that place of honor in Jesus' name. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth and belief of the truth that's what brings the victory Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14 Ephesians chapter 6 reading from verse 14 it tells us in verse 14 Stand therefore, having your loins got about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. And I pray that this scriptural truth will saturate your heart, saturate your spirit, saturate your life, and make you always victorious. In the Lord, in Jesus' name. Having purchased the truth, having preserved the truth, having recognized the power of the truth, having embraced the profit of the truth, you want to declare it to all the people. You don't want to be a baby all your life, a little child all your life. You want to have the stamina. And you want to have the commitment to proclaim this truth until it penetrates every community. We're looking at point number three now, the proclamation and the penetration of sanctifying truth. Proclaim it, declare it, preach it, publish it, promote it everywhere, earnestly, zealously, relentlessly give out this word of truth that will save others. Matthew chapter 28 reading from verse 18 Matthew 28 verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, that's the truth, all things whatsoever, I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of of the world and the people of God said Amen. Amen Mark chapter 16 verse 15 Mark chapter 16 verse 15 proclaim it preach it declare it forcefully wholeheartedly courageously Nothing but the truth of the gospel. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Penetrate the whole world. Saturate the whole world. Declare this truth of the word of God. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, Acts. Of the Apostles, chapter 5, we're reading from verse 19, Acts 5, 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought 
them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Don't hold back. Words of repentance, that's the truth. Declare it. What's of faith? Faith in Christ. That's the truth. Saving truth. Declare it. The word that cleanses. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Don't hold it back. Declare it. Sanctifying truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Don't hold it back. Declare it. Regenerating truth. The truth that makes us new creatures in Christ. Don't hold back. Declare it. All the words of this life. And as you declare it, you'll saturate the whole land. I said you'll penetrate the whole land. That's how they did it. Look at this. Verse 28. Acts chapter 5. Verse 28. It says... Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. They filled Jerusalem, they penetrated Jerusalem. They saturated Jerusalem. Every nook and corner of Jerusalem. Every creature in Jerusalem. Every house in Jerusalem. Every community in Jerusalem. Every street in Jerusalem. They declared the saving truth of the Lord. And the Lord is telling us the same thing. Preach the word. Declare the word. Saturate the land. Every community in the land with this saving truth of the gospel. Proclaim, penetrate. Acts chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 2. Acts chapter 6, verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason, not reasonable, that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Understand? Serving tables, very important. We must eat. Serving tables, essential to keep body and soul alive. Serving tables, that's essential, important, indispensable, but not to be compared with proclamation of the word. The penetration of every community of the saving truth. And so they said, it is not right. It is not reasonable. It does not stand to reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among yourselves seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Verse 4, will proclaim the word, will penetrate every nation with the word, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, to the ministry of the word. We're coming to chapter 19 of Acts. Acts chapter 19. We're reading here from verse 8. Acts chapter 19. Reading from verse 8. And he went into the synagogue. And he spake boldly. That's how to proclaim the word. That's how to penetrate every community, speaking boldly, authoritatively, speaking with conviction, and he spake boldly. And for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Verse 10, 
And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. All they that dwelt in Asia heard the word. There was proclamation until penetration. We're coming to Second Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and at his kingdom preach the word don't let economy silence you preach the word don't let your profession silence you preach the word don't let darkness silence you preach the word don't let the people that reject silence you preach the word don't let your own circumstances silence you preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables They'll turn away their ears from the truth and they will turn unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. Thank God you will. I say, Thank God you will. They did it like that in the early church, they went everywhere. They proclaimed the word, the truth. And they penetrated everywhere in their community with the word. Your own time has come. Our own time has come. You will do it, I will do it. We shall do it together. We purchase the truth. We preserve the truth. We know the power of the truth. And we know the profit in the truth. And we proclaim the truth wholeheartedly. And we penetrate the whole of our nation. And the whole of our continent and beyond. With this truth, we'll use every means available. Every method available. We'll do it personally. We'll do it in every way. And we'll penetrate our world with the truth in Jesus' name. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Are you going to do it to a conviction? Let's see how the people before us did it in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, I'm reading, I'm reading from verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, tell me, preaching the word. Went everywhere, telling me, tell me, preaching the word. And we now who are saved, we now who are sanctified, we now who have given up everything so we can have this truth. And we're going everywhere. We're going to proclaim this truth. And we're going to penetrate every street, every community, every local government, every region, every state, every nation with this sanctifying truth, sufficient truth. We're going to saturate everywhere, penetrate everywhere with this truth in Jesus' name. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere, went everywhere, went everywhere, preaching the word, proclaiming the word, penetrating their world with this saving truth. You will do it. Where are you? You will do it. 
I said, where are you? You will do it. Stand up and tell the Lord, yes, Lord, we will. Yes, Lord, we will. Yes, Lord, we will. Yes, Lord, we will. Get the truth first. Receive the truth first. Live by the truth first. Purchase the truth first. Preserve it with your very life. And let nothing take any part of the truth away from you. Taste the power of the truth. Let it save you. Let it cleanse you. Let it purge you. Let it purify you. Let it empower you. And then profit by the truth. The profit of the truth that corrects, that cleanses, that recreates, that regenerates. And then make up your mind, I'll proclaim it. Make up your mind, I'll penetrate my family, my community, my region, my state, my nation, my world with the truth.